Hello again, you join me in another garage. Um, I actually have a microphone now. It was £30 from Amazon, so I'm not going to hold my breath about it being any good. So if the quality is good, yay. If it's not, well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. Anyway, this is another one of the fuse board videos. So today I'm going to be going through the Wilex 3036 DB. So these fuse boards come in different varieties. So you've got these ones, which are the metal ones, which are the better ones in all honesty. You've got wooden back ones and plastic back ones. I've actually just found the cover for this. So this is what they're supposed to look like. And you can see here, switch off before handling fuses. This is imperative here. When you remove them and put them in on load, they're uh, a bit spicy. I might show you it on video, uh, depending on what kind of loads are on this DB. But this is our main switch here. These are a 5419 rather than a mod, more modern one, which is a 6094 to 7-3. With this on, it's actually quite sealed quite well. I mean, you can see we've got a bit of an IP fail at the top, but if we get that off and out of the way, there was a giant spider, like, it was like Shelob protecting that thing. So I don't know where it went, I'm a little bit worried. But anyway, these are our fuses. As you can see, they're different colors. We've got five, 15 and 30 amp. Now there is a significance with these, which I think is quite a clever, primitive design. I say primitive, it's not that old, but um, when you, when, let me withdraw these. Ugh, crumbs. So you can see the blades here. So this is our five amp. This is our 15. See the thickness of the blades? And finally, ugh, our 30. Now the significance of these blades is that it can't be misfused because this 30 can't fit in any of the other ones. You can go the other way with it. So this 15 will go in here, but it's just not the end of the world if you got a lower fuse inside the carrier. Go in there, but it will not fit in the five amp. I think that's a really clever idea and uh, stops you misfusing. So let's go through some of the common issues that we have on here. One of them is this is missing, because when this is missing, can you see, we can see right inside the fuse box. It's a bit of an IP fail, you can see right in, see it all, hello spider. Um, and you can see that live part of the neutral bar there. Uh, you'll see sometimes these are damaged and scorched, they get quite burnt and um, where they've had faults, because they do rupture quite significantly. Um, another thing with these, if we check out our fuse carriers, you see we've got a little window here. Can you see that tiny fuse wire? So that is a five amp fuse wire. Now you just have to get used to them. So if I'll show you a five, here's our 15 amp. See it's slightly thicker gauge. And then if I pick the right fuse up, this is our 30 amp, thicker still. So when you, you just have to kind of get used to it. You can carry some wire around with you, but there's nothing stopping you putting this gauge wire in one of the five amp carriers. So it's something that can be, you really got to look out for. Another thing is these being misfused completely by people just putting a paper clip across it or anything else I can find, fag packet, those sort of things. And uh, then these become like little mini bombs to be honest. And uh, yeah, they can get quite dicey. So something to, important to look out for. Also any damage or crack to the carriers and these bits, there is a different design where they've got these circles on them with the fuses in them. And when they're missing, that's a live part underneath it. So yeah, things to look out for is this fuse wire. Right, I'm gonna get the cover off and show you the inside of this fuse board. And here it is in all of its glory. Now this is, I like these ones. So I'm gonna put a picture up here of another older style one. And you'll notice, give you a time to look at that you'll notice that this switch is actually covered up. So on those other ones, these terminals are completely exposed. So when you operate this switch, you can press like when you turn this off, you could end up slipping and touching that live terminal. And it's such a dangerous thing because you want to be able to turn it on and off when you're working on it. Cause you're going to do live tests. You're not going to put the lid on each time. It's going to be a, a really, really long EICR if that's the case. But as you turn it on, you can slip. And I have done this and touch that live terminal. And same when you turn it back on, when you turn it on, you slip down and the buzz bar here is completely exposed. You see, this has got the tape on it. So this is a more modern one. And it's a, so you, it, not only is this covering it, but can you just see that in there? I'll just put a picture up here 
of what it looks like normally completely exposed so you can slip touch it again i've done it lived it learned my lesson so that's why i always bang on about it um let's get it back off but inside here you've got a uh these carriers they do get a little bit burnt sometimes they've got a little pad on them they're not asbestos or anything like that it's just different designs um our neutral bar is just here makes getting access to it quite difficult and then our earth bar is just over here the these boards are normally installed to a decent standard by today's standards anyway because I, I don't know if it's workmanship if it was a sign of the times if it was just people had more time to do things people cared more I don't know but coming across one of these that's in a really been installed really poorly is incredibly rare I've just realized I'm now sitting amongst the spiders and uh Honestly, the size of that spider was unreal. Right, these fuse carriers are removable. Let me just take a couple off just to show you. Okay, and that's it removed. I just want to talk about this for one more second. You see how obvious it is that it's not off because it says off with this bit on it, which is brilliant. If I show you the other one again, when it's off, it's just a little label and it points towards, so that it looks like it's pointing to the on and it looks like it's pointing to the off and it can be confusing. And again, it can end up in disaster where you inadvertently turn something on. Again, I'm telling you through experience, I have had a link inside here and I've act inadvertently turned it on while a link was inside and I blew up my shorting out link. Only human, everyone makes mistakes. That is an aeroplane overhead, and I'm not sure if you can hear me at the minute or if you can just hear that aeroplane because it's so loud. But we all make mistakes, and you live, you learn. Don't make my mistakes. Okay, behind here, what you notice is it's a double screw terminal, so you've got two chances of getting it right and also wrong as well because I have seen a lot of them bit down on the installation. But you can then move these around so they're interchangeable you can move this to there and what have you so that is one way you can misfuse so you could take off this red one here pop it on here and then you could misfuse but it's, it takes a tool it takes getting the lid off it takes a bit of experience i mean it takes <laughs> you shouldn't be doing it don't get me wrong but you can't just inadvertently do it so you, it takes takes a bit of effort to get it that wrong um they do get damaged and burnt. I've seen the tops of these get completely scorched and start arcing, um, through arcing and that kind of thing. These rivets also come loose or can come loose. So you, let me just try and get right in there. And that's the only thing holding them on. And um, behind this cover, let's see if I can get behind it. Well, you can't really see, get access to it. But if there's no screws or anything like that, it's just a molded part. So if they have been disturbed in transit or been abused over the years you can't guarantee that the buzz bar connections on the rivet there and there are good so it's just something to bear in mind should these be if you find one of these should you just outlaw them straight away if i find one of these ones this is in good nick i mean we've put a bit of intermescent sealant in here to seal up the ip fail at the top and um it's all metal the lid's in place there's no signs of burning and it's protected by an rcd further back is there an issue Another thing you'll come across is these, where they've been upgraded. So these get retrofitted to these consume units. Now these have different blades and they need new bases, basically. So these bits need to be replaced. So you get these with a different base, because you can see, I'll just try and show you. So this is a six amp. So this would be the equivalent. You can see the blades are completely different. So you cannot, like this, into any of these. I'm not sure if you can hear me because of that aeroplane. Um, so you need a different base, but what happens is, because electricians, some electricians suck, um, people will just do this. They just force this into the blades with the, and then when the lid's on, like that, now you can see a glaring issue, can't you? The access to the live parts is so much more pronounced especially without that cover and then what happens is this cover no longer fits so people hack the front of this off to allow access to the mcbs so it's not wilex's fault that people were doing this they do sell the appropriate carriers and that kind of thing but they're just not meant to be retrofitted to these types of boards because these ones have the gap 
around it is so much more pronounced whereas the plastic ones they're much closer to the carriers around here so what it means is you can't get the lid off without removing the fuses whereas this design you can get the lid off with the fuses in place so it's just people being um yeah well <laughs> if you ain't got nothing nice to say don't say nothing nothing at all um, there is usually information on the side of these, but I think most of it's on the front. This is a more modern design. So something to bear in mind, as I spoke about in another video, is that these are only 3KA. So we've got 60898, and it's a 3KA breaker. Now these are a little bit different. So these are 3036. So you, when you put this in, if you put this into, or have a look online, or put it into your software, you notice that these have a much higher braking capacity, um, not braking capacity, max ZS value so i think this are five amps around nine ohms if, if off the top of my head don't quote me on it um but the other thing is the braking capacity is lower so this one would be about 1ka on a five amp anything above that is normally 2ka so oh, i picked up the wrong one donut so a 15 amp would be about 2ka um they're a different number if i've got the chart i can put it up here if not i'm just looking like an idiot but there's like a sa1 sa2 sa3 and sa4 and they correspond to one two three four and that's their ka rating um so yeah just another little nugget there but with these boards the most you're gonna get normally is lack of rcd protection on sockets so um circuits providing um feed in the bathroom that kind of thing ip failures are quite common and then the burning scorching and bits moving in within it rivets failing and that kind of thing right, i'm just going to show you it with the cover removed so you can see those are the rivets i was on about so it's just one there one there um these are quite modular so you can see you can add on units so there's a bit there and that's the original so it's kind of promoted mass production with it because you can that was a two-way unit and then you could bolt on another bit and it could be built i mean if you want to um there's a good video by uh, jamie blatant so if you go to the information torpedo or no, no he's now actual electrical content i think his uh, thing is um if i can figure out to put a link i'll put it in there but he talks about his first electric shock which was off of one of these boards where there's a bit of a floor whereby the fixing screw so imagine this is a two-way unit the fixing screw to get the cover on is here and it ended up oh no here and it ended up going through and touching the live part this is off before here so please um don't worry um and this is what i was on about with it on and off so that looks like it's on right because it's pointing to the on but it's not because if you have the cover on you, you can see just the off does that make sense so it can be confusing so you might think that that is now on flick it to the on position and uh yeah then not have a good time i remember i was saying about when you flick it on and you can inadvertently come down and touch the bar it's not as bad as this but you can see this bit's missing i would should have shown you a picture but i don't really know what i'm like in uh, editing and adding things because i'm a bit rubbish anyway hopefully the sound hasn't been too terrible on this and hopefully you've got something out of it and i'll catch you in the next one right so i've just got henry hoover plugged in in a minute on this socket circuit so i'm just going to remove the fuse i've got the light off to try and show a bit better you just see the little arc as i pulled it out now if there was a heavier load on this it'd be quite substantial This is what we're going on about loose connections causing, causing fires, but I don't have a heavy load to plug in. But I mean, if you do have a big heavy inductive load on here, as you plug it in, it goes pop and it really scares the bejesus out of you. Again, experience makes you wise, but you can just see, I think you get a little bit of arcing.